And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Trevor Duhon, who writes, Well, it it looks like there's another studio in town looking to sabotage its film. Like Warner Brothers, apparently Universal is now releasing Halloween Kills both theatrically and on Peacock on the same day. I guess Shang-Chi's box office performance didn't give them the same confidence that it did to the other studios. What do you think prompted this move when we've seen theatrical, theatrically only released films perform better than their day and date counterparts? I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, Trevor. And yeah, look, this was not the news I was expecting to hear, but not totally surprised either. And we'll get into why I wasn't surprised in a second here. Halloween Kills is oddly enough one of my most anticipated movies for the remainder of the year Rob because you know how much I like the last Halloween it's the first Halloween film I ever liked and I know that sounds sacrilege to say but it's the first Halloween that last one was the first one I ever liked and I really enjoyed it and I've been super excited about this one and the news has indeed come out that Halloween kills they've changed their uh they've changed their strategy from theatrical only And they're going to go on Peacock. And you're asking a great question. Why, when other studios are now moving their movies up and going theatrical only now, when they were considering streaming, all because of the results of Shang-Chi, why would Halloween Kills do the complete opposite? Well, there's actually a really significant reason why. And we'll talk about that in a second. This comes to us from the folks over at Cinema Blend who write, Universal's pic- Universal Pictures' Blumhouse and Miramax have announced that Halloween Kills will premiere on Peacock on October 15th, the same day it hits theaters. This is the second Universal movie that delivered a day-and-date premiere this year following The Baby Boss, family business back in July. Much like uh, much like what Warner Brothers has done with its 2021 movies on HBO Max this year, Halloween Kills will be available to Peacock Premium and Peacock Premium Plus subscribers at no extra cost. Sorry to the folks on the free tier. I've never understood. If you've got something that's called Premium, isn't that supposed to be the best? Isn't Premium? <laughs> I mean, I, it's like... Premium, awesome, and premium plus. Wait a minute, if it's premium, it's anyway, whatever. So, Rob, this kind of came out of nowhere. You know, they they decided to do this, and again, the person who wrote the question asked a great question. Other studios are now seeing what Shang Chi did in the theaters, and they're moving up their movies. They're now making commitments to theatrical releases. We'll talk about one of those in a minute. Why would Peacock all of a sudden come out of nowhere? And why would Universal now put it on Peacock? Well, there's actually a really significant reason why. Let's once again, shall we, jump into the Campia classroom for a moment, shall we? All right. Why would they go to Peacock? Why would they be go, go, go to Peacock? There's a couple of things, some context you have to keep in mind, all right? Netflix right now has about 200 million subscribers, all right? Right now, Netflix has about 200 million subscribers. It's actually a little bit more than that. It's like 202, 203. But let's just roughly ballpark it. We'll say 200 million. All right? And the vast, 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 vast majority of those are paid subscribers. They're paid subscribers. So Netflix, despite their outrageous costs and expenses, they are generating a lot of revenue. Not a ton of profit right now, but a ton of revenue. Disney Plus has right now, the last report was 116 uh, million subscribers. And again, some of those are free because some of them got them through their Verizon deals or whatever, but the vast majority of those are paid subscriptions. Okay? A big majority of those 116, not all of them, but the majority of those things are paid subscriptions. Okay? Those are paid subscriptions. Peacock... By the way, I really, uh, I misspelled it. I really like the Peacock service, by the way. I still hate the name. I still cringe every time I have to say it, but whatever. Peacock, as of the last report that I read, has 54 million subscribers, right? Has 54 million subscribers. That doesn't sound so bad, Rob, right? Right. Like Netflix has been around forever. They've got like 200 million. Peacock is new to the game, basically. And, and they've already got like a quarter 
of what Netflix, that doesn't look so bad on the surface, right? 54 million subscribers. Uh Aha, but there's a catch. Actually, there's two. There's two catches. Catch number one. Only about 20 million uh, actually use the service. So, yeah, they will report that they have 54 million subscribers, but only about 20 of them will activate it at least once a month. We'll actually load it up and open it and use it once a month. So, I mean, they're okay. So that fifty-four million dollar, that fifty-four million number doesn't look so great. Okay, that's fine. But here's catch number two. Peacock did something very interesting, Rob, that I actually appreciate. Peacock wasn't like Disney Plus or Netflix. It says, here's our service. This is the price. Peacock did something a little bit different, a little bit interesting to differentiate themselves from the other services. They said, we're going to give you multiple tiers. There's a free version of Peacock. That is, it's free. Free, Rob. You don't get all the content, but you get most of it. And sure. there'll be commercials to help us pay our bills. But there's a free level. And then there's premium and the defying description premium plus so there's a free level here's the thing as of the last reports that i've read uh peacock only has about five million paid subs you look at netflix they've got about 200 million paid subs Disney Plus, out of that 116, probably about 100 million of them are paid subscribers. That 54 million dollar, that 50, I keep saying dollar, that 54 million subscriber mark by Peacock looks good on the surface, but only about 20 million actually use it. But really, the big thing is it only has about 5 million paid subscribers. It only has about 5 million paid subscribers. That ain't going to cut it, Rob. That ain't going to cut it at all so whereas when a disney plus when disney is pondering putting a movie directly to disney plus they are partially thinking hey this could help out disney plus but they are also thinking maybe this will be good for the movie it hasn't worked out that way but that's what their thought process has been it's like maybe we'll see we got to experiment with this stuff let's see if this helps the movie with peacock moving halloween kills to Universal, I should say, moving Halloween Kills to Peacock has nothing to do with they think this will be good for the movie. This has nothing to do with they think this will be good for the movie. They know it's not good for the movie. This is all about desperately, desperately. This is desperation uh, to try to save Peacock. That's what all this is, Rob. This has nothing to do with the movie itself. And because, once again, let's go back to what they said here. Let's look down at that bottom line. This is key. Halloween Kills is not going to be available to people who use the free version of Peacock. Not available to you. This is only going to be available to Peacock Premium and Peacock Premium Plus subscribers at no extra cost. So you, if you want to see Halloween at home, you got to not only load up, well, first of all, you got to be going out and getting the Peacock app. And then you can't just have the free version. You got to subscribe to the paid version of the app and get it. And again, That's if right. Peacock was a service that already had like 50 million subscribers, the paid subscribers, that would be fine. But the reality is they are literally pulling two and a half percent of the paid subscribers that Netflix has and roughly about 5% or less of what Disney plus has it's and, and I say this as somebody who likes Peacock. I actually, I'm actually, I use the Peacock service all the time. I like it, but Rob, this seems like nothing but an absolute desperate measure to try to bring relevance to Peacock, which it, and again, I'm a fan of it. I'll, I'll be a supporter of Peacock. I actually think it's a real, if you have Peacock, there's a lot of good stuff on there. And I, Mm. I, I have it turned on at least three, four or five times a week, but it has not become a relevant part of the conversation, Rob. 
When people start talking about the big streaming services, Peacock has not, even Paramount Plus has surpassed it. And it's not a relevant part of the conversation. Anyway, Rob, you see that Universal has made this move with Halloween Kills. What jumps into your head? Well, first of all, I kind of, you know, horror uh, is a genre that traditionally does pretty damn well in theaters. It's a Blumhouse film. It's coming off of the very successful Halloween uh, continuation. I honestly, if all the movies that are opening in theaters, I mean, this one has the potential to make the most profit because it wasn't expensive. I mean, it was probably more expensive. I think they spent 20 million plus on the last one, but it's not a $150 million superhero movie. And I would think that the most, you know, like we've talked about so many times on the show, opening movies theatrically and having them do well increases the overall value of those films forever. And I mean, even though it's universal and it's going to eventually go on Peacock, why, why, I mean, I know why they want to bolster paid subscribers to Peacock, like you've just been pointing out, which I, I completely appreciate, but you know what, those same people, if they want to see it again, will subscribe anyway, because Halloween kills is going to be exclusive to Peacock. It's going to be exclusive to the universal streaming service. So why open these things day and date? I mean, you know, we've proven theatrical release has proven that lately that the the pandemic is not as detrimental as it used to be toward movies i would open it i would open it day and date man i, I would open it day and date and and then let i mean and not play it day and date on a streaming service but you know i they want to bolster their 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 subscriber base i understand it's not it's not out of the realm of not understanding i get it i just wouldn't do it so let me ask you this. When I when I propose that this is exclusively a move, I believe this is exclusively a move by Universal. And you know Jamie Lee Curtis and the producers got a good payout from Universal to do sure. this. But when I when I make a claim that I say I believe that this is exclusively has nothing to do with trying to help the film. This is all about trying to just get attention to Peacock. You yep. agree with that? 100% because the, uh, otherwise the the you know the, the what people don't understand is the only thing these streamers are looking for are subscribers because what that subscription base does is it stabilizes their income they can be like okay we've got like Netflix I, we have 200 or 200 million subscribers so they know that every month a certain amount of money is coming in and in the entertainment business there has never been that kind of stability ever and especially for like Warner Brothers, Warner Media having HBO Max, that subscription base keeps that cash flow normalized, which is something that a lot of studios, like when you're making a movie, John, and you're spending now studios, are, everything's over $100 million practically, that's a crapshoot, you know, and they don't have any stability. What if they make a $150 million movie and it tanks the box office? That's a huge hit. But if you have a streaming service that's connected to your studio, and you know you have stabilization there, it's good for the banks, it's good for your interest rates, it's good for your stock prices. And that is what the, that is why these streaming services are something had before. And that's why the synergy between the studios and the, their, their streaming branches are so important. It makes, it gives from a business perspective, it gives them an anchor and stability they've just never had before. That's why they want everybody to join their streaming services. And, and and to that, what you were pointing out before, too, even becomes more relevant because Disney is now figuring out that we can have that regular revenue stream with our streaming service. We put our movies like Shang-Chi in theaters exclusively. We mm. make big money on it there. And then 45 days later, it gets even more attention when we put it yes. up on Disney Plus because it had all that, as you call it, the cachet that it had from being theatrical only. So they're making money on both ends. So That's the way to do it, man. I mean, you know, everyone knows Shang-Chi is not going to be going to other streaming services. It's going to be going to Disney it's Plus. It's going to Disney Plus. And, and, you know, going to a theater, I don't think anyone who saw Shang-Chi would, would – uh, forego an opportunity to see it again at home <laughs> like i'm gonna have disney plus because i'm gonna watch the hell out of that movie you know and 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 then you know what i love about disney plus i just love having like all the star wars movies and all the marvel movies just there like if i want to watch the opening scene of say infinity war when ebony ma shows up in new york and dr strange and wong and iron man and spider-man and hulk are there 
I just like watching that sequence. And it's on, it's streaming. And I could just, you know what? I might be waiting to go somewhere. I might have an extra 15 minutes. Heck, man, I'm going to watch that scene in Infinity War. Or I'm going to watch the attack on the Death Star or whatever. That's why I love having these streaming services because I can dip into things I've seen a million times. I own on physical media, but it's just easy. And when they're all there, all your favorite candies in the candy dish right there, you just take whatever you want. I love it. Anyway, guys, the question for you is, what do you think about this move by Universal to have Halloween Kills come out exclusive? Well, not exclusively, not exclusively in theaters, but in theaters and on Peacock on the same day. I attribute it to being an absolute desperation move by them to try to give relevance to Peacock because obviously Peacock is struggling far behind the other major services. But maybe there's some other factors, too. Whatever you guys think about it, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts.